All right, so we're going to pick this up. We talked about uh, principles of internal fixation in the last uh, set of slides and concepts of uh, screw anatomy, inner diameter, outer diameter, uh, concepts of um, the bone protecting the plate, uh, the um, idea of stability that the uh, uh, bone contact is important, the screw pullout is important, the uh, plate bone friction also contributes to stability. Um, so th you know, these are all some of the concepts we talked about. Uh, now we're going to uh, talk about external fixation um, and some basic principles that uh, help uh, uh, govern stability. Now a lot of external fixation that you all see are spanning X fixes, like temporary X fixes that are used for, uh, let's say, periarticular fractures. Perhaps this is a case of a tibial plateau fracture and uh, you know the fracture is up there here in the knee and it was shortened and you pull it out to length it's almost like traveling traction um, a lot of what I'm going to talk about now applies to that but applies a little bit more so for let's say like a definitive external fixation treatment so we talked about this when we talked about screws that the um, uh, this the, the strength of the screw or in the XFIX case the pin is dependent on the radius to the fourth power, right? So it's one of the more significant factors in frame stability. You put in a three millimeter pin versus a four millimeter pin, or a you know five millimeter pin versus a six millimeter pin. There's going to be a big difference. Um, uh, so uh, one of the important things, the number of pins is important. So let's just say your fracture is where that red line is. Um, you know, if you had uh, um, two pins your stability would be less than if you added another pin. Seems intuitive, but uh, one other principle to keep in mind. A pin out of plane. Okay, so rather than all the pins being in the same direction, why is that? Well, you know, if you had this situation here um, and the frame had the opportunity, you know, to, to, to pull out in this direction and this pin is, you know, oriented this way, this is oriented this way, this pin is oriented this way, well, now, you know, this pin is oriented almost well, perhaps in the same way it's it maybe at an angle. Well, this pin clearly is now coming at a different angle, so it's out of plane than the, from the other two pins. And certainly this, if this is your fracture site, let's just say here, this pin is clearly out of plane from these two. So in this case, you can see a very short segment of bone from below the knee from here to here is being fixed um, by putting pins in different planes to each other. Okay, to stabilize that short segment. A couple of things about pin location. Um, now, I started off by saying that a lot of times we use uh, external fixation these days as periarticular uh, traveling traction, right? So you just put X fix on to pull things out to length. In those cases, I do think it's smart to avoid the zone of injury of, of uh, future ORF. Um, uh, so let's just say you know you have this uh, tibial plateau fracture. Um, you're putting a spanning X fix like this on. You probably don't want to put a pin, you know, like right there. Why? Well, because your your plate that you put on is, you know, probably going to be, you know, something that comes down something like this and probably further down. So if the pin site gets infected, your plate can get contaminated. It's just a concern. It's not great data to support this, but I think most surgeons. Uh, get a little nervous about uh, about that. That said, if you take your pin and if the bone comes down here, you put the pin all the way, you know, let's just say it's down here, well, then there's less stability. Okay, so to have, just like that, uh, uh, the slide I showed in the previous uh, session with the, uh, the plate on the forearm uh, and uh, putting the screws as close as possible to the fracture, uh, same thing here. So if you want stability and you want to increase stability, you have to put a pin as close to the fracture as possible. Okay, so there's often competing interests uh, when you have a periarticular fracture that you want to fix later. You just have to tell yourself this is just traveling traction. I don't need to make it super, super stable. But if you do, then you have to put the pin closer and then just keep it clean and hope it doesn't get infected. The other concept is spreading the pins far apart in each fragment, right? I mean, so let's just say if you had, uh, you know, a fracture, like uh, this is your 
fracture and you put a pin here and here and you put a pin here and here well and then your bar is like this well um, you know that's those two pins are acting almost like one pin and you can imagine this thing may potentially want to swivel back and forth right now contrast that to if you put your pin here and here okay and then here and here all right so that's going to be much stable now now this this segment for instance being fixed here and here it's not going anywhere it's not acting like one pin okay so spread the pins far apart in each fragment okay so near near and then far far okay or far far near near I mean if you're gonna use one bar that's a technique you typically do far far near near all right and what about wires well wires uh, same thing so if you have a proximal tibia let's just say uh, you know this is your this is your proximal tibia and your fibula is here so um, as much as can be safely done anatomically you know what you don't want is you don't want pins that are that are at a very shallow angle like this okay uh, and only leaving it at that maybe your third pin is something like this because it's the same concept as this right it's acting kind of like one pin and this is an axial of the tibia let's just say and when this patient flexes and extends the knee it's going to act almost like you know you got this one pin here as opposed to you know having pins of course they have to be safely placed you know you can't catch the perineal nerve but having pins sort of at a very you know increased angle to each other much more stable okay so with ring fixators some similar concepts um, but uh, done just a little differently another concept um, radial uh, pin preload so if you put uh, if this is your fracture and you put your pins in um, you know, let's just say they don't go straight into the clamp, right? And then you try to force those pins to straighten out. This is a very extreme example. This happens sometimes, though. Though you, you let's just say you're using one of those multi-pin clamps, and the pins just aren't perfectly parallel. So you're sort of forcing one pin that's at an angle to sort of like straighten itself out to get into the clamp. Not good. Not good. That's called bending preload. Okay, and what that does is it's sort of like, you know, your your pen is, you know, this is your hole, your pen is like nicely in the hole, and now you take it and you pull it all the way over to the side, and it's causing a bending preload. All right, so um, not good, okay, um, and that can lead to loosening. On the other hand, radial preload can decrease loosening and increase fixation. So what's radial preload? Well, radial preload is like, uh, let's just say here's your hole um, you know it's a tapered screw so or the x-fix pin goes in but as it goes in it's a little tapered so it kind of like you know as it finally seats itself it squeezes this out know, that diameter is just a little bit bigger and it exerts a you know it's called a radial preload right as it goes in and it's symmetrically directed so it kind of squeezes itself in is the best way I think to just explain it and that can potentially decrease loosening and increase fixation and some pins are just you know, designed inherently like that bone frame distance okay so uh, whether you're using a simple you know, rods or rings um, if you uh, bring the bars or the rings closer to the bone it's going to be more stable so here's just a summary slide, right? So uh, now I'd really focus on this. Remember this. It's important practical stuff, and of course it comes up on exams. Um, more stability by increasing pin diameter, increasing, increasing the number of pins, the spread of the pins in the fragment, uh, pins out of plane, multi-planar fixation, bringing the frame down to the uh, bone as close as you safely can. Uh, pre-drilling, I didn't mention this before, pre-drilling and cooling during insertion. So if you have really hard bone, if you if you burn the bone and necrose the bone, uh, you will potentially develop a pin tract infection, and then that can loosen the pin. Uh, radially preloaded pins, if that's something available to you, will increase fixation. Uh, when you use tensioned wires, remember to try to put them at um, 
you know, steep angles to each other. Uh, and additional bars are so-called stacked frames. Keep in mind, though, all these things to make of XFIX more stable, sometimes you don't want that. Okay, so that's, again, beyond the scope of this discussion, just know what makes it more stable, because sometimes you need to back off and make it less uh, rigid, that is, because uh, it's too stiff. Okay? All right, thank you very much.